On this jumbo-sized bust episode, Christian should go to sleep. But how can I go to sleep when the Chinese energy drink is in my veins, pumping, encouraging me to do the boss? He gains special powers of reading, comprehension. Tra transition. Tra transi uh, transi he gains special powers of teaching. It's so difficult to explain. And eventually, he starts speaking the language of the ancients. <laughs> Chinese energy drink. <sighs> Hi everybody, I'm Christian. This is Laziness Academy. Welcome to the final boss fight of our schmuck tutorial. The episode where we are going to do, where we are going to complete, where we are going to create a boss fight at the end of the game. This is going to be a formidable challenge. This is going to be something that will, you know, test the skills that you learned throughout this tutorial. I am going to be going a little bit faster than usual because we have to get through a lot of stuff. I will still, of course, explain along the way, but this is the end of the tutorial, so we are going full tilt. All right, so again, the goal of today's long episode is probably going to be pretty long is uh, to create a boss, a boss fight at the end of our game. And I'm actually pretty hyped about this because um, when I began this tutorial, when I first announced this tutorial, that this is something that I will do, a lot of the people ask me, oh, is there gonna be a boss fight? Is there gonna be a boss fight? A lot of people wanted me to do the boss fight because they didn't know how to do this. And I understand, yeah, it's kind of daunting. It's kind of difficult to find out, you know, where to begin with a boss fight because there's just so many moving pieces. But I also feel like um, it's difficult, not necessarily because of technical reasons, because it's not like difficult to technically do these things. But I feel like uh, the problem there is again planning. The game design kind of like, creeps in here a little bit and sabotages your ability to kind of like envision uh, the way forward. So I feel a good uh, first step into tackling this big subject of the boss fight is to just do some planning and to have a plan of what you actually have to do to kind of like get ideas out of your head on a piece of paper and make decisions, even if they might be wrong decisions, but just to have decisions uh, that eliminate possibilities so we can actually focus on getting some forward momentum. So let us do some planning. Let us do some thinking. Now, let us maybe uh, put down some, some general ideas of what a boss fight is. Uh, you might have, you should probably see some boss fights before you do a boss fight so you know what, what is happening. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have a big, big, big enemy and that enemy will have multiple I'm gonna call it phases now. I know it's not necessarily a phase what I'm talking about. These could be also considered like individual attacks in a phase or something, but I'm gonna call them phases. The boss will, the boss enemy will go through multiple phases and will transition from one phase to another. And depending on which phase it is in, it will do something different. Here's the way this could look like. So we have, um, let's imagine we have like three phases. And, uh, you know, uh, one of them is just phase number one. That's not, that's not a good one. That's not a good one either. My mouse is not doing really well today. Phase one, two, and three. And so the boss starts in phase one and, you know, does some attacks in phase one, but then uh, quickly when that phase, phase was over, maybe some time has passed, it will transition to uh, phase two or three, depending on the random number generator. Uh, but then once those are over, uh, we're gonna circle back to phase one. So it will just repeat this over and over again, uh, phase one and then either two or three. And then it's kind of nice because it's gonna be kind of like after phase one is over, you don't know which attack is coming next, either the phase number two or three, and you have to be ready for both of them. Uh, but you also have like this kind of home phase that you return to. Uh, I think this is pretty much, uh, I, I've saw, I'm pretty sure I saw this kind of boss in um, uh, the first level of LSGG, which I made a video about, which you can see there. Another idea for a boss fight would be something like, let's again, let's say we have three phases and let's just say it's it transitions between the phases, right? Like it's one, two and three, and it just goes in a circle, right? It has phase number one, after the, then it goes to phase number two, then it goes to phase number three, and then it returns to phase number one, like a circle here, right? This is also could be a plan for phases. And keep in mind that you, you like, it, maybe it doesn't have to be too complicated. A boss can be just one phase. It's fine. Here, for example, 
is um, the game Super Mario Land, a beloved Game Boy classic. The final boss, the biggest boss in this game, which is a shmup section, is just a single face. It's fine. It's also important not to just have like the you know face structure set up, but also have some ideas of what the individual faces will be like, what the behavior of the boss in the individual faces will be like. So here is my plan for our boss. And maybe it's wrong, but you know, whether something is wrong or not, it's not, it's not something that you figure out through thinking. I mean, a little bit maybe, but uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the day, you have to do these things and see if they work or not. And you can then fix them if there's any problems with them after you make them. Important thing is to make decisions here. That's what we are looking for. We want to make decisions to know what we want to work on. This is um, making boss fights is not something that comes naturally that you can figure out as you go without having any idea what, what's, what you want to do. All right, so I have four phases set up here. This is going to be phase number one. Then it will transition to phase number two. Then it will transition to phase number three. And it will then it will transition to phase number four. And then it will be back at phase number one. There's also going to be a phase to the side here, which is going to be phase number five, which we're going to talk about what phase number five does in a second. So this is going to be the generally a game plan. It's just going to be going in a circle in the phases. That's okay. Now, the indiv individual phases is um, this green circle is going to be the, my boss, and we're going to go into the design, visual design of the boss later. So, in this first phase, uh, what the boss is going to be doing is going to be he's going to be flying left and right, just like flying around on the on the screen. And meanwhile, our player is going to be down here. I drew the arrow a bit too big, so this is going to be the, where the player is. And what the boss is going to be doing is I'm going to draw maybe an orange. Um, let's maybe do let's just this um, orange. It's going to be basically uh, firing bullets in the zigzag pattern. It will be always firing bullets downwards and moving sideways, which will result in kind of like the zigzag patterns of bullets. And then um, eventually, sometimes he, uh, the boss will make a break in the firing pattern, which, which will create gaps in this zigzag thing, and that allows our ship to to come through. Uh, that's the general idea. Uh, I think I saw this pattern in some game and I thought it was neat. So I kind of wrote down the idea and now I'm going to try to implement this. It's a very, um, I would say vanilla kind of um, boss pattern, just boss going sideways and then shooting at you. Now in the second, uh, in the second uh, phase, uh, the boss will do some, something different. So what I want the boss to do, oops, I always having the same problem. What I want the boss to do in the second phase is that I want the boss to come forward to the player, to kind of start harassing the player, not just be in, you know, at the top of the screen, but actually starting to move around the screen a little bit. And I think a good way of doing this is making the boss go first down to the bottom of the screen, then fly um, sideways to the other side of the screen and then go up and then maybe in, in the center again. So kind of like do a circle around the screen. And the idea is that while the boss is doing this, uh, the boss also shoots uh, aimed shots at the player. And so the player is kind of like in the center while the boss is circling the, the player and then um, and shooting aimed shots at the player. So the player has, has to dodge the shots. And also in this phase, it's kind of difficult to do attacks against the boss. So it's kind of like uh, you have to survive until the boss uh, opens itself up to attacks again. So this is going to be the second phase. Now the third phase is going to be back basically to, um, it's going to be a repetition of phase one, kind of like a variation of phase one where the boss is at the top of the screen and does attacks against you. So we're going to just copy this idea over. And like in phase number one, the player will be down here. Uh, but this time uh, the attacks are not going to be um, the zigzag attacks, but we're going to have, um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of difficult to draw this. So I'm just going to draw it. We're going to have like this, this, um, spread shots. We're going to have like a relentless barrage of spread shots. We already had that when we created the spread shots, we're going to re rotate the spread shots. So it will create like this bullet labyrinth. That's kind of like a very typical of kind of like bullet hell kind of, um, uh, shmups. And you have to navigate it between the bullets while shooting at the boss. And then the final attack pattern is going to be uh, number four. In this attack pattern, we're going to have the boss do uh, uh, the round around the screen again, but this time it's going to be uh, clockwise. Before we had uh, anti-clockwise, now he's going to go clockwise. 
and again going down to the bottom of the screen, fly over to the left side of the screen, go up again, and then maybe in the center again. Now this time uh, it, it, the boss will fire slightly different bullets. Um, something I want to do the boss is kind of like to fire sideways while he's going down. So the bullets will fly like this and then fly up while he's going sideways. So we basically create like this chessboard pattern of bullets and the player has to go and navigate between them. I think this would look fine. And then after that is finished, the boss will then return to the zigzag pattern that we had at the beginning. For uh, attack patterns, there's always like two attack patterns always go in pairs, they're always similar to each other. Um, and um, yeah, a variety of different attacks that we're gonna just try out. This is what I thought. We're gonna just try it out and we're gonna see what happens. Now there is gonna be a fifth attack as well, the fifth uh, phase. That phase is gonna be a very, very special phase. That's a phase where the boss explodes. And so we're gonna, like once we did enough damage to the boss, the boss will uh, just stand there and just blow up for a couple of seconds while we watch and celebrate. So it's gonna be... Uh, because we want to have a really nice ending to the game, we wanna end on a, on a spectacular fireworks. So we wanna do a huge, huge explosion and that's gonna be fun to do. Now let's talk about the visual design of the boss. So I spent some time and actually did some pixel work and I create a big, big, big sprite of a giant, huge enemy. And I'm gonna use this as a boss. And I actually did a recording of my screen while I was doing the pixel art and I will show you a, a time-lapse video of that process. And I'm gonna try to comment on it as well as I can. Okay, so this is a program called Sprite. You don't necessarily need it for pixel art, but it's very popular and it's, it's kind of neat. Um, so what I'm about to draw here is a big one-eyed monster and it's gonna be kind of like the mothership or just the mother of the little uh, small uh, first enemies. And uh, the way I'm starting out here is with like, um, as you can see, with a, with a block out. So it is gonna be a big eyeball. So I just first created an eyeball. I Earlier I measured out a, um, uh, I think a screenshot and basically measured out what how big I want the boss to be, what I feel is a good size for a boss. And so that's the size of my sprite. And then I'm basically blocking out the general shapes. So first the eyeball, and then once the eyeball is kind of in there, I'm kind of like uh, blocking also the tentacles and all the appendages that belong to the monster to kind of have a feel for the silhouette of the monster, like what the general shape is going to be. And also like for the perspective from which we're viewing the monster. I was already starting to add some details as I see fit. Um, details that I know that I definitely want to have, for example, like, a, you know, the big eye and so forth. I'm going to feel, I want to see the gaze of the monster here, right? And uh, as you can also see on the left side, I have also a bit of a reference. So, you know, this is the one of the most famous one-eyed characters and uh, really well animated um, one-eyed characters that I know of. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to use this guy as a reference, um, especially for the eyebrow, for the um, because it's like a, it's it's weird. It's it's one eye, but it has like a brow that as if it had two eyes. So I wasn't really sure how to pull this off. And I'm really just experimenting with, uh, a lot with the um, with the details, with the appendages on on the head because. Um, I wasn't really sure um, what the rest of the monster is going to be. I knew it's going to be a big eyeball, but I wasn't sure what the rest is going to be. And so here I decided to have a bit of a uh, eyes uh, in the corners or on, on, at the ears of the monster, basic additional pair of eyes, which are, uh, you know, just a bit of alien, freaky alien thing, um, but also maybe a bit of a, a reference to the uh, to the uh, googly eyes I had on my, on my headphones, so a bit of a self-insert here. And so yeah, yeah, I'm I'm now tweaking now the the shapes, making sure it's, it's not too square because you know he's kind of like conforming to quite quite closely to the to the shape of the actual sprite, to the square shape of the sprite. So I'm trying to kind of hide it. And now I copy the monster, and I'm also trying to create like the second frame where the monster closes the eye when uh, when they get hit. Um, and this is a bit of a problem because then I have to kind of like model out the, the brow and I also want to furrow the brow even more because it's kind of like really closes the eyes shut uh, uh, and like really, you know, presses the eyes together. And then, um, so it kind of like makes me like reconsider, you know, what the shape of the brow is going to be like in the first place. Uh, and uh, also makes me reconsider the shading of the brow. So I'm constantly going back and forth between this new frame and the original frame to make sure kind of like everything is consistent and the ideas that I discover also trickle back uh, to the original design. I haven't even used any kind of like, there's probably some special features that allow you to 
draw symmetrical monsters, but I haven't even done that. I'm just copying one side of the monster over. And so here I'm moving on to the other animation frame. So I'm trying to animate the tentacles at the bottom, but I realized quickly that's kind of difficult to pull off when they already shade it in. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just, again, I'm going back to blocking them out. I'm just um, painting them in, in one color and doing the animation with just one uh, flat colored big uh, tentacle uh, and making sure that, that the, the shape of the tentacle is, is fine, moves fine throughout the animation. And once the animation is in there, I will then go back to all the frames and add in back in the shading. Um, um, but first, as always, it's always the most important to get the shape right. Uh, everything uh, follows from there. Uh, so yeah, at this point the animation is going well. I can add in the shading. Uh, one little trick I'm using here is that uh, there's blue light coming from the bottom, basically. there's like a, I'm using a bit of a blue. And um, that's kind of like always a bit of a problem with Pico 8. There's not a lot of colors left. So, you know, you, you have only two shades of green. And then how do you add more detail? How do you add more richness to the monster? You have to use some kind of trick and yeah, use colors that you might not pick otherwise. I think this is actually really good because it kind of teaches you um, more uh, more creative use with the color palette. And at this point also I'm trying to make other parts of the monster animate. So I'm trying to make maybe the eye animate, maybe the reflection in the eye uh, to animate. Uh, but the pixels are so big, it always like ends up being feeling really odd. Um, and so I had to abandon these ideas. Uh, probably in hindsight I would probably do another pass on the monster and try to add some features to the monster that you can animate on the top, uh, in the uh, top portion of the uh, of the head is it's kind of like pretty static in the top. But at this point, it's kind of okay. I'm happy with, with the, the way this monster turned out. I'm happy that it creates a bridge to the beginning of the game of the early monsters, and I export it as a sprite sheet. Right, so here we are. Let us bring in the boss into our, our shmup. We're gonna load the shmup. Uh, that's the shmup here, and then we're gonna bring in the boss in tab number one here in our uh, sprite sheet. We're just gonna drag the... Um, wait, that doesn't work. We have to actually click here. And we're gonna drag and drop the boss into here. Ah, nice, 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 nice. So we have like this huge, huge alien eye. Uh, we have three animation frames for uh, mid moving ten tentacles. You can see them if you make the this box bigger. You can see how the tentacles are moving. And then we have one frame for the closed eye for the moments where the boss gets hit. So we have kind of like a hit reaction for the boss. Um, yeah, so the next goal is gonna be making this boss appear in the game. Right, so let us oh, press much. Let us go to the to-do list real quick. So yeah, bump is something that we dealt with. Scoring is something we do in the next episode, but today is all about the boss. Okay, so the next step is to try to get the boss actually on the screen. I just want to see the boss. I want to see what it looks like. I want to just see it on the screen and interact with it. And so we can fix maybe any other problems that might come up and we can make a plan on what to do next. So we're going to go to the enemy spawning function, spawn n. Here's the yellow guy. And after the yellow guy, we're going to go end uh, type uh, type uh, equals five. And then, and then we're going to spawn the boss here. Now, uh, pre previously, the yellow guy was supposed to be the boss fight, uh, but I actually tried uh, doing the boss fight with the yellow guy. And I realized very quickly that the sprite of the yellow guy was just not impressive enough. It was pretty small. And so like, it didn't feel like the, this epic boss fight that it, we would expect at the end of a, of a game like this. <laughs> so I decided to and bigen the sprite to create a new sprite that is bigger and more more uh, kick ass. And something that it allowed us to do is to take the yellow guy as another enemy in our collection of enemies and add more variety throughout the game as well. So it just had multiple positives in general. Right, so let us add this uh, boss now. Let's just copy all this stuff and we're just gonna uh, modify this so it fits our boss. So let us get the my sprite, let us get this um, down. We don't know what the health is going to be of the boss is going to be. I'm going to leave it at 20. It's going to, he's going to die very quickly. And I'm going to figure out later what's what the real health is going to be. Um, the sprite I want this boss to start with is going to be this one. That is 68. The animation that the boss is going to have is going to be 68, uh, 72, 76, 72, 76. And the way this animation is set up is that it goes 
uh, forward and then backward. So it's like a zigzag pattern, basically. Uh, start with 68, then 72, then 76. So it's kind of like forwards and then into reverses. So from 76, it goes back to 72. Uh, and then the animation stops. So it restarts, which means it goes back all the way to the beginning, 76, and then goes forward again, right? So it goes forward and backward. Um, the sprite width and sprite height is going to be the width is 4 and height is 3. Uh, collision width is 32, collision height is 24. These are just like the size of the sprite that we're working with, that's good. Um, mm, 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 mm. Now I want the boss actually to show up in on the map, so let's put it um, all the way on the top of the screen. And um, yeah, let's, let's just do this. Let's just set the um, a wave, the starting wave to 8. And I just want to see the boss. Uh, there's a problem here, else if. I forgot an if. Let's try this. All right, here's the boss. And oh, wow, he actually starts attacking us. Why is he attacking? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he was triggered, I guess. He was triggered. Yeah, he was triggered. He was nominated as uh, a boss that shoots things. And then he also started to uh, now his, his attack run, but he doesn't have an attack uh, plan. So he just stands there and, and is being really excited about it. Okay, so something I noticed immediately that is that the boss is not centered. Um, so I want to actually tweak um, its um, pos x and uh, well, do they? Have to, yeah, I want to tweak pos x and and its x position as well. I want to make sure that. Um, yeah, that he goes into, uh, like he's nice and centered on the screen. Um, so that's going to be um, 64 minus um, 16. That's going to be the position that, that that his sprite would need to have. That's 48. Um, and that's going to be also his destination. He will stay in this. Now his Y position, his height, I'm not sure. Uh, I think 24 was a good one. 25? 25. Let's try 25. Uh, that's not going to be where he starts out at, but that's going to be where he goes to. Uh, so we don't need, I guess, this part. Um, let's just, just spawn him just outside of the screen, so like 24. Uh, minus 24, yeah. Let's try that. Okay. That's good. That seems like a good position for him to start. Um, now, something I don't like is that he's moving in really, really, really fast. And that's something we might want to fix. Um, I want to maybe add another property to him, and that's going to be just boss equals true. And we're going to check for that property uh, in multiple places because we want certain things to work slightly different because it's the boss, right? So I feel like he goes in a bit too quickly. He's a bit too sudden. Uh, so let's go to the behavior. Uh, let's go to the flying in here. That's good. Uh, let's rewrite this a little bit. So we're going to go local um, dx, and did a, something like this. And then we're going to copy this over here. We're going to mess around with this formula a little bit. We're going to put the results of how much we want to add to x and y. We're going to put these into separate variables. And then we're going to go if my n dot boss then we're gonna do something else we just gonna uh oh, oh i didn't I, I made a bit i made sure that i want to make sure that dy actually gets the y that's that's very important here uh and we're gonna plug dx and dy in here that's good so if the if we're not dealing with a boss uh we're just gonna take those variables that we just created and we're just gonna add x and y we're gonna add the, we're gonna take the values to x and y and just add those new variables to that. But when it's the boss, uh, what I want to do is I want to do something similar. Uh, but I want to clamp down those those speeds. I want to make the boss move slowly air into, in, slowly air into place. So um, something like max dx uh, one, for example. So um, Max is a function that we already had. It picks, it takes two uh, arguments, and it picks the returns the argument that is bigger. Uh, so if dx is bigger, uh, actually it should be min. So min is 
um, it's the opposite. It returns the argument that it is smaller. So um, when um, the speed at which the boss is flying in is greater than one, it will just return one. Uh, we actually, yeah, let's just, let's just actually do this something like this, dx, yeah, like this. That will be a bit more compact. And we're just going to manipulate the dx and and then and afterwards we're just going to continue. This was still uh, pretty fast, so I'm wondering why that that's the case. Right, because it's dx, but we actually wanted to have dy. Ah, oh. the x is the sideways speed, but want the vertical speed to be slow. Yeah, see now he's coming more. That now he seems more threatening because he's coming with a bit more slower. Maybe let's turn this into one point five. Maybe it's a little bit too slow. The sound effect in the background is is bad. We're gonna have to fix this. Uh, I th I felt like the one felt maybe good after. Let's just keep it at one for now. Uh, but yeah, but the sound effect in the background is bad. We have to find maybe a different sound effect for the boss to appear. We're going to deal with that later. Okay, another thing I want to do while we're actually here is... Um, you see how the mission changes to protect after um, after uh, the boss arrives? So I want to actually change this uh, depending on... Like if the boss uh, arrives at its destination, we want to change this to... Uh, a, a different mission that is not going to be protect that's going to be the uh, ba boss based mission so we're going to go if my n dot boss then else and then so in if it's not a boss we're going to set switch to protect but in if it's a boss then we're going to introduce some new fancy boss based missions and the way i thought we're going to pull this off is we have four phases of the boss right we have four different phases that's a state machine, right? You already probably had that in mind, right? That's a state machine. That's something that we had. State machines is something that control the missions of our different enemies, the thing that they do, the switch from different modes. And that's something also that is we have in our uh, in general controls the behavior of our entire game. The game switches between different modes and depending on which mode we are in, the game will do different things. Well, the same thing with the boss. The best boss will have different phases and depending on which phase the boss is in, it will have completely different behavior. And so that's sort of something I'm going to do. I'm just going to call this boss one. This is the first um, mission, boss one. And as you surmise, there's going to be also boss two, boss three and boss four and boss five. So let us do those missions right away. Um, we're going to go else if my n dot mission equals boss one, then that's going to be boss one, uh, boss two, boss three, boss four. Now something like this, right? Now at this point, there's nothing in those missions and our our, our uh, goal would be to, to fill those missions with, with some kind of meaningful stuff. We're going to deal with that later. But first of all, I just wanted to see what is happening when the boss lands here. Right, I want to shoot at the boss, and when I shoot at the boss, ugh, I mean, okay, I killed the boss. That's great. That's that's possible. That's that's good to know. But also, like the flashing that that we're doing here, that doesn't look great, and um, the entire boss turns white. See this flashing that we did with the with the enemies? That works really well if the enemy sprites are t really tiny. That really pops. Um, but if the sprites are big, the flashing can get pretty intense and kind of like ruin, like it's, it kind of like ruins everything, I think. So we have to come up with slightly different flashing. And we also at this point want to introduce our, our sprite where the eye is closed. I want the boss to uh, visually react. I want to see a facial expression of the boss being hit. Um, and again, we're going to tone down the flashing severely. So let us go, um, I think, in the draw function. Let's go where we're drawing the enemies. Here's the flashing, right? If so, we're actually gonna. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something that's that's interesting. So let us just assume. Let's go to the where the enemies hit the. Uh, uh, the bullets hit the enemies, and here let's just like say something like, if my n dot boss, then else. So let's just assume that bosses don't flash. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, set the S sprite 
to to the closed eye sprite, right? That would that would might be a good idea. I'm just gonna set the sprite to 64. Right? Let's try that. See, it doesn't work. Because the boss closes the eye for just like one frame. And that's that doesn't read as closing your eyes. So that doesn't really work. That's too short. Uh, something we have to do here is we have to actually, when the boss gets hit, we want uh, the eyes to be closed for a couple of frames. And for that, uh, I actually want to reuse this, this variable that we have here, this flash variable. I want to reuse this. So we're going to make this flash variable do something else when the boss gets hit. Uh, when the boss gets hit, I'm going to make the flash variable um, change the sprite. And we want to also tweak the, the colors differently. We're going to see in, in a second how that works. So let's just go to the draw function again. So, okay, so when it's, we're flashing, we're going to say if my end dot boss, then we're going to do something else. And then, but otherwise, we are flashing normally. This is for normal enemies, and this is now for boss. So the boss will have like my end dot spr equals. We're going to change the sprite of the boss, in this case, to 64. Right? Let's try that. This works better. But now the boss doesn't really open the eyes anymore. Why Why doesn't he open up the eyes anymore? Ah, I know! Because here, um, we copied too much. We um, mean to actually decrease the flashing. <laughs> we didn't do that. It was in... Uh, caught up in this if statement. So here, and when it was a boss, the flash was never reduced to zero. Let's write that again. See, now we have the same problem. The flashing is too short for the boss. So we still have to go back to the update function. It's it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a wild goose chase. Um, and we have to go if my n boss then else and. So if it's a boss, we're going to flash a different length. Uh, let's try five. Let's ho see how that works. Uh, we just need to, uh, it's to be flashing long enough for the boss to, to, um, uh, to do, do not open the eyes between the individual hits. Yeah, that seems good. Um, okay, so now the boss has continuously uh, their eyes closed when they get hit. But if you look at this, uh, let me give him more health, actually. So we have more, uh, we can analyze his behavior a bit better. Let's give him 100 health. So I feel this looks a bit dry. I feel it looks like it might be not quite clear if we actually doing damage to him. He closes the eye, but that does that mean that maybe the eye protects him from damage? Like because he doesn't flash like he, like we are used to, right? So it's kind of like it might be it might seem like it's maybe the bullets are not doing nothing; they're bouncing off. Now, uh, so in order to be really really clear that we're hitting the boss, I want the boss to actually still do some flashing, but we're gonna do a uh, different type of flashing. So again, let's let's go in here, and uh, we are gonna just turn two colors into a different color, not into white, but in a different color. So we're gonna do a, the pal statement. That's the statement that changes colors, um, turns one color into a different color. And what we wanna do is we wanna use this dark green color that we have here. We wanna focus on on the dark colors. We're gonna turn this dark green color into uh, let's turn this into red, into into an eight color. So we're going to go dark green is three and we're going to turn this into red. We're going to turn this bright red. Uh, that's good. Um, I wanted to also maybe turn the actual green of the monster, the actual green of his skin. I want to turn that into 14. So that's going to be uh, 11 turning into 14. 11, 14. So now it feels like the boss is glowing red. That's good. That's what we wanted. But now I feel like maybe um, it doesn't really feel like as if um, the individual hits are being reflected by what we see. 
So I still want to maybe add some uh, flashing to this, some kind of like um, intermittent flashing to the color change, actually just the color change. And we're going to use this old trick and we're going to see this trick again a lot of times. We're going to see, say, if t modulo uh, for is smaller than two. We had that pre pre in the previous episodes. We're, um, yeah, we are checking, we are doing the modulo, we are, which means we're dividing by four, but getting the reminder. And that allows us to do something periodically. And in this case, uh, basically, um, we have two frames of um, the colors being changed and two frames of the colors not being changed. That's what uh, what this text does. Four frames, we divide by four, and two of the frames will be executing this if statement and two of them won't be executing this if statement. I should get us a flashing, but I'm not sure if the flashing is the right frequency. Mm, I might be actually too too frequent, might be too much flashing. So let's go, let's try 6-3. Let's try that. Nah, I think I'd, I like 4 too well. We have to pay attention to this. This is maybe too intense uh, of a flashing, but I kind of like this. It feels like... It feels like it reflects our... Yeah. So you can see now, you can really tell that, yeah, we are hitting the boss for sure. He's flashing and closing his eye. It's really clear what is happening right now. Good. Now, I noticed something that we had just had as well. Um, so when the boss was shooting, and now he's not shooting anymore because he doesn't have the protect label um, assigned to him, the protect mission assigned to him, so he won't get picked as a potential uh, shooter. But what if we wanted him to shoot? Let's let's look at this. There was a bit of a mismatch there. You saw it probably. So we're going to do, um, uh, let's go if, um, again, t modular 15 uh, equals 0, then I'm going to go fire my n. 0, 2, just like fire down, and we're gonna see how that looks like. So he's not firing from where he's supposed to fire, but he also flashes while he fires. So let's fix all these problems one by one. Let us go to bullets, let's go to the fire statement, and let's see where the flashing happens. Uh, it's here. We're gonna go if my n dot boss it's not equals uh, true then. I probably could do like a not here, but oh, whatever. Um, yeah, so we are not, not flashing only if it's not a boss, when the boss fires. Okay, now, now the bullets are coming out from the boss and there's no flashing, but the bullets are coming at the wrong spot. So let us try to fix this. Uh, if my n type equals uh, four, then else if, uh, my end boss, then the my end boss is a bit superfluous. I could have just checked if type equals five, that would be f um, fine as well. But I thought, you know, why not? Like this is this is such an important thing. Let's do a specific property for this. It's fine. Um, so yeah, in this case, I want um, the bullet to be, uh, I think plus. F so it's thirty-two in width, so it's like fifteen on the x. And 24, so let's do like a 22. Let's try that. 24 in height, but we want to spawn a bullet at the very bottom. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe 23 would be better. Yeah, that, that looks better. So the bullets are coming out of the right place and the boss uh, looks good shooting. There is no muzzle flash and uh, it would be really great to have like a system to, to be able to create muzzle flashes for the bosses. We don't have such a system and I'd want to start in one of those now. Let's just leave it like this and then maybe you want to add it later on. Okay, so the next, next big step is us actually uh, making sure that the boss actually goes through the different phases. Right now he has a bit of firing in phase one number one. Let's make this go away. And let's make the boss go through the different phases. Let's make sure that the, the actually boss actually transitions. Now, uh, I wanted to create a separate tab for the boss. Uh, tab number seven, boss. And we're actually gonna do all of the logic for the boss in this specific tab. So it's kind of like, because like writing it right directly into this would be just like, um, uh, so here, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to trigger different phase, uh, different functions. So we're going to go 
uh, bus one and leave it at that. Uh, bus two, bus three, uh, bus four, and bus five. And that's it, that's all I'm gonna do. Now here we're gonna actually write those functions. And again, that's not necessarily efficient, but also we are at the end of this, this development cycle. We don't need to be efficient anymore in many ways. And we're going to talk maybe about at the end uh, what you can do if your game is bigger and you want to, you are getting into resource problems, uh, what you can do to optimize things. Right now, I'm just really uh, interested in, at um, yeah, creating all this stuff, right? So making things work. Mm. Okay, so we created now functions for this and I'm like really interested in making the boss transition to the different phases. So um, let's, just, let's just decide that each phase will uh, last a couple of seconds. Let's say eight seconds, right? That's something in my testing that I found was good length for a phase. So let's say um, we want every phase to uh, last eight seconds and after eight seconds it will transition to a different phase. Uh, there's, we found now a lot of ways of doing timers, of doing transitions, of doing like, you know, waiting for a certain moment and then doing something at a certain moment. Mm, I think for the boss, I, a good sol solution would be to do something similar that we did for the lockout, for the uh, keyboard lockout. Mm, let me, let me show you what I mean. Um, so here where we spawn the boss, right? So what something I want to do is I want the boss to have, uh, well, maybe not here. I'm going to have a phase begin, phase start, uh, pH start, start, begin, pH begin. Let's go pH begin. And that's going to be kind of like the frame at which this particular phase has begun. Uh, and that allows us to control, to kind of measure how long this phase has been going on already. And if it's, uh, you know, past the phase is, is going on for a certain amount of seconds, you can then transition to a different phase. Uh, where are we going to do this? Where are we going to do this? Uh, I am going to actually add this at the end where we transition to phase uh, number one. So here in the spawn function, um, in the fly in mission, uh, so the boss will uh, be set to the boss's mission will be set to boss one, so the phase number one, and we're gonna go uh, ph begin. Uh, we're gonna set that to t. We're gonna remember that at this frame is where the boss uh, began its first phase. And so what we can do now here in boss one, we can go at the end, like we're gonna do the boss fight and so forth, and then at the end we're gonna go if uh, boss dot uh, ph begin. uh plus eight times uh 30 that's eight seconds if that's smaller than t yeah if that's smaller than t if t has is is has moved past um this moment that is eight seconds after the beginning of the phase. So we kind of like the, the time is too late. It's, it's, it's so difficult to explain. So we calculate which frame, uh, which frame number is going to be eight seconds after the phase has begun. And if um, uh, the current frame is higher than that time in the future, then we're going to say, okay, now it's the time to transition to the next phase. And in this case, we're going to go um, boss uh, dot mission equals boss two. And we're also going to remember the begin of the of this phase. So we're going to go boss ph begin equals t, right? So we can then copy this code and paste it in here. And this is going to be uh, transition to boss three, transition to boss four, and transition to boss not five, but back to one, because the five is going to be, it's going to be the explosion. We're going to do a different transition for the explosion. Okay, so we have to now have some kind of way to see this, and I think um, it's going to be time. I, I always do it every mine, every software of mine, uh, every card of mine. I actually somehow didn't do it here. It's good to have a debug va variable, so like a variable that that says chicken. I don't know, and then we're going to draw that to the screen. So we're going to go in the draw function. Here we're going to do uh, print debug 
two two uh, seven. So now it says chicken in the, in the uh, up, upper corner. Let's, let's maybe print it a bit further down because the hearts are there. Okay, there's chicken, right? And then the idea is that here in the behavior, oh, we can actually go, go here. We can do here debug equals uh, boss one. So we know that these functions are being executed properly and we can see the boss transition between the different different places okay let's try that that didn't work right there is no such thing as boss um yeah, that I I I did 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 a Mr. Rooney a mistake a Rooney here. Uh, the different functions for the boss they will all accept my n as an argument, and I didn't do that. And they will receive my n as arg argument. And then it's not going to be boss obviously, but my n. Okay, let's try that. So that's phase number one. Let's see if it changes to phase number two. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, that's phase number two. So now another eight seconds are being counted off. And they should be around here. Yeah, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was too fast. And then back to one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So now the boss cycles through the four different phases. Uh, so the next goal is to actually start working through the phase. So let us start uh, implementing phase one. Um, so each phase will basically, we have to do have like a check checklist basically. We have to do movement. We have to do um, uh, shooting. Oops. Ah, no! I pressed the wrong button. Shooting. And we have to do transition. Uh, trans let's go call this transition, uh, which means like, uh, it... I cannot write anymore. It's good that the tutorial is coming to a close because my, clearly my faculties are deteriorating. <laughs> so, um, tra transition, tra transit, transit. Yes, that's right. Uh, the the eyes and they are so confusing. Okay, never mind. Uh, right. So this is the transition to the next phase. We actually did the transitions already uh, in most cases, so that's fine. I'm gonna keep the debug uh, around um, just in case. Um, so yeah, uh, in this first part, uh, the boss is gonna be moving left and right. So I'm just gonna implement this real quick. Um, Something that definitely has to happen in every phase is probably the move, uh, my n. Uh, so, and so that's kind of a bit, a bit of a duplication, so it might be wise to somehow automate this. But yeah, we're going to move to my n for sure, every phase. Um, so we're going to say something like, if um, my n dot sx, so if it's not moving, it's stationary currently, which is something that happens after it came down, uh, then my n dot um, s x uh, equals minus two. And actually, it might be good actually to be uh, to have a local variable that calls this basic SPD, and is the speed of the boss. Um, and we are gonna so we can change the speed of the boss in a phase by just tweaking a variable, so we don't have to chase down all of the places in the code where. Uh, we are setting the speed of the boss to positive or negative or something. Um, I think that that's, that's a good good uh, thing. So now if we want to change the speed, we can have to just change this and we don't have to look through the code of this um, this phase. So yeah, if it's um, if the sx is zero, then we set negative. And then if my n dot x, if that's smaller or equals, let's say like, three I just, I just yeah if it's like it's close to the edge 
uh, then I want to set it to positive again. And then we're gonna go else if, well, wait a minute, let, let me think about it. So let's do a third statement. If my n dot x, if that's greater than a certain number, and I actually did some testing. I did some figure, figuring out, I didn't write it down. So it's 128 minus 32. Uh, that's gonna be 96, but it's also minus eight. No, it's not minus eight. No, that's, that's that 96 would be the position of the boss if it was touching the right edge of the screen. But we said maybe we won't wait until it completely touches the edge of the screen. We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna make him return earlier. Um, and then, end. so if it's at the right edge of the screen, we're gonna just make it turn around. Now this and this are the same. So what we can do here is gonna do an end st uh, or statement here. So if the boss is not moving or if the boss is at the right edge of the screen, your right edge of the screen, uh, then um, then we're gonna make it go left, uh, left. <laughs> and if the boss is on the left side of the screen, then we make it go right. This should give us a boss that is moving left and right. Let's see if that worked. Not quite what, what happened. Uh, oh yeah, if my n dot s x, I want it to equals equals zero if it's, if it's at zero. Let's try that. That's what we wanted. The nice, like, we had, I think, one of the first episodes, just like, ooh, <laughs> it flew away because it changed to the next phase and then it's like stopped. <laughs> and then it left the screen and so it was deleted. That's, that's, I love that. I love that. It's like the boss was like, nope, I'm, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> ah, this is above my pay grade. Yeeting away the boss, uh, as the youth says. Okay, so this, um, uh, sets the movement. Um, so let's just move over to the shooting. So we're gonna go if um, I have to look down. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do it like a rapid fire kind of shot. So let's try that. If T uh, uh, like every three frames, you're gonna sh and do a do a do a shot. So if um, T modulo three equals uh, zero, so every three frames, we're gonna do a fire. My n um, my n yeah. Um, down, so zero and two. So very, very fast bullets are going down at a high rate. Let's, let's see how that works. That's good. I feel like this sound is really grating. That doesn't really work. <laughs> that doesn't really work for a rapid fire situation like this. It works for the small enemies because, you know, they don't fire that frequently, but in I, I think in this case we want to maybe do like a special firing sound for the boss, which means we have to do sound editing. Let's go, let's do this. I actually have a little cheat sheet on the side in case I get lost in experimentation. I don't know, no, I have like a what worked previously well, because again, I, this is not the first time I'm doing this boss. Uh, but every time, you know, if you do some redo something, then it, you know, it changes and everything. So that's good. I don't know why it's playing. I don't, I don't want to play this. What, what's, what, why is this always happening? And then make it uh, go fast. See, I said something like this. It's it, maybe it sounds more like, yeah, something like this. Maybe a bit wilder. And then maybe we detune this. Or bad? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really need the bus. No, not definitely not this. Yeah. I actually, I'm fine with this. It's the, the idea is that it's um, supposed to be something that can be rapid fired, and I think this is good. So sound 34. All oh, right. Right, right. So we have to do this actually in the bullet function in SFX here. So we're going to go if my n. Uh, well, actually, we can actually use this my n statement here. So we're going to do uh, else. 
So we're gonna do this sound effect, and when it's the boss, we're gonna do 34, right? 34 was the sound effect. Let's try this. Yeah, I feel like this this sounds this sounds a lot better. I feel. I mean, it still sounds goofy, but but um, but I think something that maybe fits uh, giant alien spitting bullets at you. Right, we're not quite finished though because now he's creating the zigzag pattern. That's good. And and I mean, okay, sure, I can be like in the edges of the screen, and then I won't get hit. That, that's kind of like a safe zone here. And I guess I can just go in here always and and and, and hit him. Uh, but I wanted to also uh, uh, leave an opportunity. Uh, leave like gaps in between there so the players can go in, into the de gap, gaps and kind of like weave between the different uh, the different uh, like stay in, in the zigzag area and like weave between the gaps I think that's that's a that's a cool challenge um, so we're gonna do something like if t modulo 30 equals zero then Uh, is that how we're gonna do this if, if it's not equal zero? If it's greater than zero. Let's try that. So it, see it creates gaps now. But the gaps are a bit too small, so let's 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 make this uh, zero than one, uh, greater than one. Okay, we have bigger gaps, but they're still a bit small, greater than two. Nope, greater than three. Oh yeah, okay, and these are now serious gaps. But uh, but yeah, I think this is this is this is more fair. And again, this is one of the things you can tweak if you want to have the boss be harder. Then you can maybe tweak the gaps a little bit. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is this is a good place good place to be. Okay, so this was phase number one. Let us move over to phase number two. Now, phase number two is going to be a bit difficult, um, and it's. It's, um, we're gonna basically do, uh, I wanna copy this, this comment so we, we have to remind the movement shooting transition. It's always the same, movement shooting transition. Um, it's gonna be a bit difficult. Um, we want the boss to go around the screen. And as, as you remember, I drew the, the paint thing. It's kind of like, it's, it's, a, it's four movements. So going, it's always difficult because you're mirrored. So, um, Going to the left edge of the screen, then going down, then going uh, on the bottom of the screen to the other side, and then going up. So that's like one, two, three, four different types of movements, right? Uh, to go around the screen if you want to follow the edges. Mm, so that's kind of like four like tiny phases, so to speak. You can think of them as four tiny phases. You can do this without doing like, uh, you know, like a state machine, like a dedicated state machine. You can just use if statements and you can, uh, you know, weasel yourself out there. But I thought when I was writing this uh, in my experiments, that was a bit of a spaghetti code. <laughs> I turned into spaghetti code very quickly. So let us just bite the bullet here. And let's just create sub phases. So kind of like in, in this entire boss phase number two, there's gonna be a sub phase, right? And and that might be easier to, to figure things out. So when we transition to boss number uh, to boss phase number two, we're gonna go my n uh, sub phase, and we're gonna set it to sub phase number one. Okay. Um and then here. Uh, is the debug? Did we put the debug all the way up? We oh, did we remove the? No, it's it's here. The debug is at the transition. So let's put it underneath transition. That's good. Let's focus on the movement, right? Uh, we're gonna. Go, the shooting is always going to be the same for this boss, so that's not a big deal. So we're gonna go if my n dot sub phase if that's equals one then else if my n dot sub phase equals two then and then we're gonna create oh, i did something i didn't want to do uh, where am i okay and then 
three, four, and three, four, right? Something like this. Now in phase number one, we want my n.sx to be, oh, uh, we also forgot, we want to also create like a little variable here that we, um, that allows us to control the speed. We're gonna set the speed to two, but I think it's way too fast. So if my uh, n.sx, um, uh, okay, so in subface number one, my n.sx, so the speed, the x speed is gonna be minus spd. So we want the uh, boss to go left, until it reaches the left edge of the screen. So that's going left. Now we have to figure out uh, where to reach the end of the screen. So we're gonna go if my n dot x is smaller than three then, or smaller equals three then. And in this case, we want to transi transition to the next subface. So we're gonna my n subface equals two. Then this phase is over. This subface is over. Right, in subface number two, uh, we want my n dot s x to be zero, uh, but we want to now move downwards. Now we are moving along the left edge of the screen. We're moving, it is left, right? No, <laughs> along the left edge of the screen, we're moving downwards until we reach the bottom of the screen. So we're gonna go my n dot s x equals zero, my n dot s y equals SPD. We go at the speed of SPD. Um, and then we're going to do another if statement if uh, y is greater or equal, let's go 96 for now. That's the same that we calculated, uh, 93 uh, we calculate. Let's go 96 here. Uh, and then, uh, so if we are low enough on the screen, we sub transition to subface number three. And subface number three. We're just gonna copy this, this stuff out because it's basically the same. And so now as y is gonna be turned zero, we no longer want to go downwards, but we do want to go um, to the right, to the right. <laughs> it's so difficult, I have to just, oh wait. I have. So going to the right means we have to set sx to our speed. And we're gonna wait until x is uh, greater or equal 93, we said 93, with 93 here, we're just gonna keep using 93 here. Uh, so that means we are at the edge of the screen on the right, and then we wanna transition to sub, uh, subface number four. And in subface number four, we're gonna say my n dot s x, um, Mm -mm -mm. Now we're going to go up, right? So SX is going to be zero and SY is going to be minus SPD. And then we're going to wait until we are at um, 25 again. 25 was where we spawned the boss. Um, and if that happens, uh, if we are smaller or equals 25, we have to turn around the sign, smaller or equals 25. And if that happens, Mm, then we want to actually transition the entire boss to the next entire phase, not the subphase, but the actual phase. So we're going to take this and we're going to plug it in here. So this is actually going to be the transition now. This is the transition here. Um, right, right, right. So we don't need this anymore. Good. So this was the plan, four subfaces, the, and it should leave us our boss being in the uh, top uh, right corner. And then it will do nothing, <laughs> basically. I mean, we it will actually probably fly away, so let's, let's just not move it in phase number three. All right, so this is the first phase, that's, uh, that's good. That feels good. That's a good, that's a good first, that's like really intimidating because he's moving really fast. So now he's going around the screen and then coming up. Perfect. Isn't that just good? Mwah. Something I don't like is he's pretty close to the edge. Why is he so close to the edge? Let's, let's observe this again. Uh, at this point it might be actually wise to make him transition to the next phase very quickly. So we don't have to go through this entire uh, sequence. So let us just do this. This is going to be the original one, but we're going to make him transition from the first phase to the second phase very, very quickly. 
Um, something like this. Let's run this. Yeah, he's really touching this, the the edges. I don't like how he's touching the edges. What's 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 up with that? Um, let's go six here on the first surface. I don't understand why that's happening. Oh yeah, now now it looks better. Uh, let's let's go four. Yeah, let's, let, okay, let's keep it at four then. And then what else? So 96, so let's just make it a 95 and 94. Oh, no, that's actually, that's okay. Uh, here, so 90, 91, let's, let's make it 91. I'm just tweaking the, the values at which the phases are uh, transitioning. So he's not quite hugging the edges so 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 extremely. It looks like it can kind of like unpolished when, when that happens, I feel like, oh yeah, that looks better. Uh, we could go further down on the screen and maybe we should. Um, so let's go 98 here. Yeah, maybe even further, let's go 100. Yeah, let's go 99. I'm sorry, I'm being a bit perfectionist here, but I, I really wanted to, to like nail this this now. Yeah, yeah, maybe that, maybe like this. I don't know. Ah, uh, maybe 100 was better after all. Okay, so um, yeah, this is phase number two. Oh no, it's not finished yet. It's not. There's no shooting. Let's do the shooting. Um, so we're going to use kind of like the same trick that we did in boss phase number one, uh, where we did a T module. We're going to use the T module timer. We're going to use this again. And this time we're going to do uh, aim fire. Was it aim fire? Aim fire. We're just going to do aim fire shots, uh, but not quite as frequent. That would be kind of pretty depressing. I think uh, something like every two shots per second would be nice. So that's kind of like something like this. It seems good to me. So that's good. Um, I would maybe make the boss move not quite as fast. Uh, something I notice is sometimes when I'm going to be hanging out here to, to show something. Watch, watch the bullets at the, of, the, of the boss. See how when sometimes when the boss shoots a bullet and it goes in the same direction that, that the boss is flying at, the bullets will feel, it feels like the bullets is kind of like hanging out with the boss. It's kind of like, it's, it feels like it's stuck to its face because the boss is basically moving at the same speed as the bullets. Mm, so I'm going to set the speed of the boss to 1.7 or something, or maybe even 1.5. Let's try that at 1.5. See how that looks. Yeah, see now it also seems like if he's firing more bullets, but he's not, he's just moving slower. And that feels more dangerous, maybe even in this case, because it's not so much about the boss hitting you. I mean, it just feels like a bit stressful when he's encroaching on your area, uh, but it's really about more the bullets, I feel. Okay, so this is the shooting. This was phase number two. Uh, let's l transition ourselves into phase number three. Right, so now it's all about phase three. Phase three in terms of movement is gonna be a lot simpler than phase two. Phase two was kind of like, there's there was a lot happening in phase two. Phase three is uh, really simple. We have the code for that already. So we're just gonna copy it from phase number one. And that's kind of nice that the phases are kind of like echoes of each other. That means that we can reuse some of the code. Uh, so we have a speed happening and we're just gonna go back and forth. That's it. We, that's all the movement done. That's crazy, right? Uh, so now all that is left to do is do the shooting and again it's going to be the same thing as previously where every couple of uh, frames we're going to shoot. Um, I'm not sure if uh, two shots per second is okay. We're going to figure it out on our own. Um, but it's going to be, it's not going to be aim shots. It's going to be fire spread. Uh, we're going to uh, fire spreads while the enemy is moving around and that might take some while to figure out. So the enemy is shooting. Um, now we have to figure out, uh, I think the first one was how many. So let's just say eight. At what speed two is a number that we like to use these days. 
and then um, yeah, like the basic rotation. Let's just keep it at zero, so it means that that um, the spread is not going to rotate over time. It's going to be always the same spread, and we're going to see how that looks, and we're going to tweak things later. I just want to see the spread for now. Um, mm -mm -mm. And then here we're just going to transition to boss three immediately uh, from boss one, so we can just see the results immediately. Okay, now he's not moving at all. I'm not sure why he's not moving. Why is the boss not moving? Boss three, why are you not moving? Oh, do we? Oh, yeah, I don't have a movement here. We <laughs> quoted this out so so the boss doesn't fly away. But now we don't need that anymore. Yeah, so we can see already he's moving too fast sideways. You see kind of how this, his one bullet is always stuck to his mouth because the movement is moving at the same speed that the boss is moving. That looks awkward. But I feel like we don't really get like this kind of spread fire any any anyway because he's moving just way too fast. So let us bring his speed to like 0 0.5. So he's like slowly creeping back and forth. Uh, another thing I wanted to do at this point, just to make sure I'm going to set SY to 0. Uh, because he uh, will be arriving from, um, yeah, we will be right, or maybe actually, uh, man, uh, let us, or let us set this here, uh, where we transition to boss three. Uh, we, I want to maybe set S Y to zero, so the vertical speed is cancelled, so he stays at at the level that he's at and just goes sideways. But I also want to say like the movements of the boss are like, very, uh, that's what I said, like the linear motion kind of movements, they're very um, same-ish, right? And that's kind of fine uh, in this case. Uh, we don't want to complicate things by making the boss move in like fancy way with acceleration and so forth. We can still add those things later on. I just want to have like a, uh, I want to have the boss, I want to see the boss. Okay, so this is good, but as, uh, as you can see, you can really easily avoid the bullets right now. So let us maybe increase the frequency for one. I want to have more denser bullets. So let us um, turn uh, every 10 frames, we're going to shoot the spread. Um, but also I want to maybe twist the, sh the, uh, the spread. So let's put time in here, because time is a kind of like a well, uh, well-timed function here. So time uh, delivers the amount of seconds that have passed, but it will... Um, uh, deliver a comma value. So if 1.5 seconds have passed and it will deliver 1.5. So it uh, quite often delivers comma values and that's always good to plug into a sine or any kind of angle thing. Uh, so basically that now the spread will turn around um, in by a whole circle every second. And yeah, that's that's a more stressful pattern. Let's divide it by two maybe. It's kind of difficult to tell because I've been uh, playing similar boss designs for a long time now, so I'm not sure if this is difficult or not. I mean, I, I'm having no problem avoiding this, but maybe somebody who is not prepared for the for the spread shots, maybe he, they might have uh, more or more problem. I think it's, it's fine. I think <laughs> like he's slowly creeping out like, ah! <laughs> okay, so I think that's good. I think we can, we can leave this be. Uh, and then uh, after eight seconds, we're going to transition to the next boss. So let's move over to phase number four. Right, with phase number four, we arrive at this similar problem that we had at phase number two, and that is it's going to be a four-step kind of movement. So I want to bring back the sub-phases. So when we transition to say to, sub, um, to phase number four, uh, before we transition to uh, phase number four, I want to actually uh, set the sub-phase to one again. So we can do kind of like the same um, if statements that we had previously, and I'm just going to copy all of the stuff. I'm going to copy all of the stuff. And I'm gonna paste it in here. Uh, just a reminder what the face is. So the enemy is supposed to go, uh, the boss is supposed to go around the circle, around the screen again, but this time uh, maybe anti-clockwise, uh, or no, actually this time clockwise, because previously it was anti-clockwise. Uh, so different way around, we have to tweak the numbers a little bit here. And then, uh, it, but it shoots differently. It doesn't shoot aimed shots, but it kind of like shoots like vertical and horizontal shots and then vertical again. So it kind of creates like this kind of like a, I mean, if, if you drew the trails of all of the bullets, they would have like this um, checkerboard pattern on the screen. Um, you will see how that looks like. It, it will be fine. Um, 
Right, so let us uh, go through the different subphases and see how the enemy has to move. So again, the direction is reversed. So at the beginning, we're gonna go positive on the X. And now we're gonna um, make sure that uh, he, um, we're gonna wait for the boss to reach the end of, this, um, of the, the right side of the screen. Uh, let's go 91 here, because you had 91 here. Mm, then we're gonna go move over to subphase two. In subphase two, uh, we're gonna stop horizontal speed. We're gonna add vertical speed. That's correct. We're gonna wait until um, it hits the bottom edge. Uh, then we're gonna move in the other direction again. So we're gonna go minus in here and we're gonna go smaller equals. What did we say was good? It was it three, it was just three. A four. Um, smaller equals four. That's what I wanted. Right. So w when we are in phase number three, uh, we just went to the left edge of the screen, and now we want to go up. Um, so yeah, again, we the Y is negative SPD, and we're gonna wait until we're up. So this this code is the same. Going up and down is the same. Just left and right has to be switched. Um, and then we're going to transition to, I said it to boss three for some reason. Oh yeah, because I copied stuff out, obviously. Uh, and then, then we transition to boss one again. Now this old transition is something we can delete. That's something that we had in uh, phase, number one, uh, phase number two as well. So all that is left is shooting. But for now, I just want to see this phase. Uh, so for debugging purposes in phase uh, one, I'm going to immediately switch to phase number four. I'm looking for the boss to go around the screen anti-clockwise. Yeah, that seems good. That seems correct. All right, so let us concentrate on the actual shooting of the, of the phase. Uh, so right, so the shooting is a bit troublesome because the shooting is technically also um, my sleeping timer just went off. I should go to bed soon. But how can I go to sleep when the Chinese energy drink is in my veins pumping, encouraging me to do the boss? Ah. So we do the shooting. The, um, but the thing is, in this case, the shooting is kind of like phase based. Um, so we're going to actually do the shooting inside the if statements. So if we're going, so we're going to do something like if, um, or maybe is, should I go, hmm, it's going to be a lot of if statements. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to do a separate, separate um, a phase check in inside this shooting mm, for reasons I will explain in a second. So if um, T uh, modulo, um, let's say every 15, uh, 15, um, frames we're gonna do a shoot let's just do a fire first just, i just want to fire a bullet i just want to see a bullet my n um comma 0 0.2 right and let's just see see this boss shooting some bullets uh okay that's not what i wanted yeah this, i always make the same mistake equals equals zero Right. Um, okay, that looks good. That looks good. So here was where, where we actually I'm gonna start checking for different phases again. I did the phase checks here, but I'm gonna do the phase checks again inside this um, this if statement here. And the reason for that is I might want to tweak um, the frequency of the shooting, and I don't want to tweak it four times. So I don't want to have the um, the modular checks inside the subphases. I want the modular checks to go to be uh, in their own, like first do the big modular check and then depending if it's time to fire a bullet, we're gonna figure out in which direction to fire the bullet. Um, so we're gonna go if, there's a smarter way of doing this, I just realized, but we're just gonna do the dump way. I think that it's just gonna confuse people at this point. So if subface equals uh, one, then else if uh, subface equals two, then else if, Subface equals three, then L. Let's just, let's just keep it at this end. And then, so in, this, in the first phase, we're going horizontally and we are at the top edge of the screen, so we're shooting downwards. 
we're in the second phase, we are at the right edge of the screen and going downwards and we want to shoot in um, to the left. So that's going to be 0 0.5. That's the angle. No, 0 0.25. That's the angle uh, to the left, 90 degrees to the left. If we are at the, in the third phase, we are at the bottom of the screen and we're moving sideways and uh, sideways. <laughs> I think this direction. I'm just getting so confused now. Uh, sideways and then shooting up. Uh, and that means shooting up means um, the angle is 0 0.5. We had that in an angle uh, lesson. And then and at the end, we are again going up, uh, but we are on the left edge of the screen and want to shoot to the right. And that is going to be uh, 75. Like this. Let's try that. Again, there's smarter ways of doing this, but I just want to want to see it work, and we can optimize it later. There is such thing as optimizing too early. Yeah, this works exactly as I wanted. Yes, perfect. So the boss will now do it constantly because he's kind of like stuck in a loop here. That's, that's okay. Uh, I don't like the frequency. The frequency is too too. It's too rare. Uh, the bullets are not dense enough, so I want to maybe increase the frequency. Uh, but now the gaps are a bit too narrow, so let us um, tweak the frequency a bit more further. Okay. I'm down. That's good. That's good. That's good gaps. I can hit them uh, reliably, and it and it feels it's it's a, it's a good attack. I like this attack a lot. So as you can see, you kind of like you have to uh, constantly hit those gaps, but the bullets keep coming from different directions, and I like that. This is good. Right, 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 right. So now actually we did all of the phases now. So really the only phase that is left, the only phase that is really left is going to be the explodey Rooney phase. Um, I'm going to delete the debugging stuff. I don't think we need this anymore. Uh, if we encounter some problem, we can bring it always back. I just want to fix the boss so it kind of like works again as the way it's supposed to do. So uh, we're going to transition after uh, boss n uh, phase number one. We're going to transition to boss phase number two. We're going to uh, wait the full duration of the thing. Mm. Uh, this debug is also gone. And yeah, let's let's try that. Let's let's do the uh, full boss fight against the boss. That's that's a very reasonable boss. And then yep, that's that's really nice uh, dodging those bullets. Just keep him moving. Then then we have like this uh, labyrinth. I call this labyrinth because this kind of like feels like you're caught in a labyrinth of bullets. Ah, oh, just got caught there. And then I have to dodge these bullets, big gaps, but you have to like always reorient yourself. And then we're back to back to those zigzag patterns. This is good stuff. This feels good. This feels like a good, good, good boss. Right. Um, so let us think about when and how we're going to transition to explode the runes. So let's go. So the idea is that if we uh, hit the boss, um, let's change the, his health to uh, very low to 20. Let's, let's change to 5, whatever. <laughs> uh, this is just debugging purposes, right? So the idea is when I shoot down the boss, I don't want him to explode. I want him to actually now transition to the fifth phase. Um, so let us go in update function. Now collision with enemy in bullets. Mm, so if, if it's the boss... Oh, so yeah. So we have to go to the kill n function, right? So that's going to be kill n. There is go. There we go. Kill n. Mm. So we're gonna say like if my my n dot boss, then and then we're gonna go um, my n dot mission equals boss five. So we're going to transition to uh, boss five, the boss five uh, mission, and, and that's going to be explosion. That's going to be here, right? 
Um, but now also that he transitions, we might also in this moment when the transition happens, we might do some things with with the boss. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to maybe set the beginning of the of the phase. Uh, how do we do this? How do you call this? pH begin, right? We want to set pH begin. Uh, that pH begin. We're gonna set pH begin here. Um, so we can measure how long the explosion will take, right? Uh, and then what else? Um, I, something I like to do here. Um, I mean, we maybe don't don't really need it, but it's kind of like nice to have this. So we're gonna set a ghost to true. So we're gonna set the ghost mode for the for the boss, and that's not, that seems mysterious and good. Uh, but the idea is that maybe we have some objects in the game that are kind of like not really shootable, that are just like there, and but they're not really interacting with anything. And in the case, this case, when the boss starts exploding, then we definitely want to set the ghost mode so we can shoot it even more. And so we cannot die by flying into the boss. It, we're just really waiting for the boss to, to do a, a dramatic and theatrical explosion, right? So we're going to set the ghost mode to true. So it's, the boss is no longer interacting with, uh, with shots and collisions. And then in the... Uh, how could we do this? We could do this really basic, right? We could do it is even in the actual collision section itself might be actually really the best. So we're gonna do like if a dot ghost or b dot ghost then return false. So if either a or b are ghost, then there's no collision happening. That would be a very simple thing. Then we don't have to chase down where on what collisions are happening. It's just like, okay, there's just no collisions. We're going to turn off collisions for this object. Um, yeah, let's try that. Oh, there's one more thing. I also wanted to do um, e balls. I want to clear, when I want to set the e balls array to, to empty, because if there's any bullets around and they're approaching the, my, uh, the player, I don't want the player to get hit by a bullet and possibly die while the boss is exploding. It would be pretty embarrassing. So let's just like delete all of the bullets. That's fine. It's um, a thing called bullet canceling. And it's actually something that is quite often, comes up often in, in shmups. Sometimes it's, um, it's actually during the game as well. You have a big enemy and he shoots a lot of bullets at you. But when you shoot on the enemy, all of the bullets disappear. That's actually really cool and can be a really cool mechanic. And also something I want to do here is I want to return. I don't want to do anything of the other things that are happening. Uh, when a normal enemy is killed, I just want to transition to this, to this, different, um, to this different mode. And in this different mode, in the boss five, well, let's just first think about when it ends. Mm, how did we do this? So the transition, we have to think about the transition. Uh, let's do this transition here, mm, like this. So if pH begin plus, let's set it to just four seconds. I think four seconds of explosions is plenty. And if that's finished, then we're gonna del delete the boss from our enemy list. So we're gonna del enemies dot boss, and that will mean that uh, not not boss my n. Um, and that should trigger uh, the phase being over because then there's no longer any enemies on the screen. We actually can actually probably gonna go, we can probably achieve the same result even easier like this. Just clear the enemy array. Could be also working. Um, yeah, let's just try this. <laughs> Right, so now the boss is a, is a ghost. I can face through him and now the boss is gone. So the, our goal is now to uh, make the boss explode in spectacular fashion. And this is something that happens here. Right, oh man, the, the many things that we want, we can do with the boss now. So we can now tap in all of those special effects that we set up and, and I'm absolutely gonna do. So we're gonna, let's, let's take the shake to, uh, I don't know, number 10, it doesn't really matter. It, the boss will constantly shake. Another thing that uh, is that the, the, boss, uh, the boss will always flash uh, every frame. Uh, and then we're going to go, go if uh, T uh, modulo, um, how often? Let's just say every eight frames, um, zero, then 
we're gonna explode the boss. We're gonna explode uh, my n dot uh, x, my n dot y. Something like this. Let's try that. Okay, that's good. Mm. The explosion is in the upper right corner of the boss, so let's fix that. Um, it would be actually good if the explosions are uh, in different places, right? So it's, let's go like um, my n dot x plus r and d 32. So it's a random position along the sprite. And then plus r and d 24, a vertical random position along the sprite. So now the explosions are in random positions. And then we're going to go sfx. I'm going to also uh, play a sound effect. Not this one. Is that the explosion? Oh, that was that was the player getting killed. SFX2. Every time things explode. D doesn't this look just amazing? Isn't this just like the best thing? We can make it even better though. So something I let's let's watch this again and pay attention to kind of what, what happens. Um, I feel like so. I feel like um, at the end is a bit underwhelming. It just like and then it disappears. So um, one way of maybe doing this is I we want to increase the frequency of explosions. Uh, by the end and we want to do this maybe uh, once we're two seconds into this phase so we do something like this so if we're two seconds into the phase um, we are gonna uh, spawn an additional explosion every four frames um, and maybe like every Every, every every five frames let's see how that works and this should create a more um i want to do some uh, high set five because so it's the eight is not divisible through four so they're not we're not going to have two explosions at the same time so it's more staggered a little bit more chaotic let's see how that works um yeah and it's just like another explosion and and so we're going to have more frequency like a higher frequency <laughs> So this is good, but now it's kind of like the explosion builds up to something and there's nothing there, right? Like there's no big explosion at the end. So we might want to maybe actually do the big explosion at the end. And let's actually do a screen shake here at the end. So let's do a 15, uh, big uh, 15 screen shake. And uh, let us actually do a small screen shake every time there's a small explosion. Now is the time to bring in a screen shake because now the player doesn't really have to pay attention to bullets or anything anymore. Now it's just really time to relax and enjoy the spectacle. So it's okay to have a lot of screen shake now. Okay, this was good. This was more of a now this the screen actually shook, but I'm. Um, there's still something missing. There's still like this this sense missing that you know something like amazing happened. So maybe we are actually gonna do a custom explosion all just for this one last guy. It's I think he's worth it. Just like a big, big explosion that maybe leaves something behind. Uh, so I'm gonna take this function explode. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it in here. Right, 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 right. And then here is something I'm gonna uh, is blue is something and we are completely not interested in. This is going to be big explode, big explode. Um, right. So this is actually the part that I'm most interested in. This is kind of like the initial flash. Um, it is at 10 on the original, but we will make it going to go 30. So it's really, really big, actually bigger than the, than the enemy. Um, and, uh, I'm hoping that if it's so big, it will take a while to fade out. So we're going to see some reminders some kind of like a, I don't know, like a last uh, remnants of the explosion being there on the screen after uh, the ex big explosion has happened. Now we're going to actually do, this is the regular explosion particles. We're just going to have a lot more of them, just double the amount of particles. Uh, this is the speed of the particles. Let's just, um, just like make it go twice as fast yeah let's let's go twice as fast 
Um, this is the starting age and this is the maximum age. Let's just make it go also twice as old. So it's like a bigger explosion overall. And then maybe uh, some of the parks are even bigger. Why not? Uh, and this is uh, the sparks. Um, so with the sparks, I'm actually, I, again, I'm going to have a lot of more sparks and I want them to go a lot faster. So this is the speed. Um, oh yeah, the same way we can just like make it go really, let's go 30. There's, there's, they, because we're going to slow, get slowed down anyway, so that's okay. Uh, and again, the maximum H is be something we're going to um, uh, pump up a little bit. And yeah, it's going to be a spark. Okay. And then we're going to also have a big wave. I'm not going to create a special wave for this, although I could. Yeah, so this is basically the same explosion, just bigger. And we could create parameters for it, so we can just reuse the same function. Ah, I don't know. And again, it's not, not necessary to have um, to have um, efficiency here, but we're maybe going to talk in a second about how we could optimize all of this. Right, so let's make it explode, big explode. So at the end, if we reach the end, I'm going to go big, explode. This time not random, but actually plus 16, actually in the center of the sprite. And here, plus 12. Let's try that. <laughs> Baby! Yes, yes, yes! Um, something I don't like about this, I, it looked awesome. Let me to actually just, yeah, let's just enjoy this again. Oof. Oh, I love how there's the smoke uh, being left. Yeah, that's, that's really good. So I love this, um, but I, 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 there's the, like there's no really sound at the end, um, like a big explosion sound. It, so we have to also create a big explosion sound. I'm sorry, we have to. Um, you see how how many details go into something like this, right? It's 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 a labor of love whenever something like this has happened. So this is now the moment. Once I went through this once, I really appreciate it in in the shmup. You know, some there's some kind of uh, flourish, some kind of visual flourish, especially when busts are exploding or something. You can tell if there was somebody who like really uh, had fun with, with with these things. So I just want to have a big explosion. Whoa, that was very loud. Let's something like this. Um, I wanted to turn it to the, to uh, to this. So it's more of a cartoony explosion. And then we're gonna fade out maybe a little bit at the end. Really, really loud at the beginning. Uh, something that really works nice if we can you duck out some of the notes at the beginning, so it kind of feels more. So it feels like you know, like maybe like um, if the uh, there's like a term for this uh, in Germany is oversteuern. So it's like kind of like um, clipping. The audio is clipping. So it's kind of like it feels uh, it looks distorted. That seems good to me. Uh, sound effect thirty five. I'm just gonna spend too much on the sound effects. We. S I, you can you can tell that this is this can be a rabbit hole. <laughs> I just can't get over how awesome this looks. Um, I felt maybe some of the uh, um, cloud effects were a bit too big, so let's tweak this down a little bit. Here, the size. Yeah, maybe six was a, uh, eight was a bit too much. Let's try six. Yeah, that's, that's it felt better. And now you have like also the, in the middle of this fading big circle at the beginning. Yeah, that's good. Um, 
maybe let's set that to 25. I just can't stop myself from tweaking. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. Okay, that's something that we have to deal with as well. Um, so at the moment, you can actually shoot at the enemies and they will lose health when they're flying in. And I don't actually like that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's fix that real quick. Um, so when there's a collision, let's let's go in updates. Uh, update, yeah. Now when the, the enemies are colliding with the uh, with the bullets, <laughs> when the bullets are colliding with the enemies. Um, so we're gonna co do a collision and um, my n dot mission is not equals fly in. Uh, so the idea is that if the enemies while the enemy is flying in, it's kind of like um, no, actually, let's do it like this. The collision happens, and the enemy will react, uh, but we're just not gonna not gonna do any damage. So we're gonna go if um, my mission is not equals fly in, then then do the damage. So there's not the enemies won't actually take damage while they're flying in. It will look like as if they're taking damage, but they're not actually taking damage. Um, and this again, this is something that actually happens a lot of schmucks. This is actually funny, interesting. Um, the reason for this is you in regular shmups when the enemies are kind of like you know flying in uh, from the top of the screen is that you want to give the enemies some kind of window in which they can even appear on the screen because otherwise if the enemy if the player is spamming shooting all the time and they do um, they will destroy the enemies before they even on the screen um, and, and there's not going to be any enemies with which you can interact. Uh, so you kind of want to give them at least a chance to actually appear before they start taking damage. And I think this is kind of like the same situation here. We just noticed we were able to kill the boss before it actually arrived. That's not going to be the case with the real boss. Um, but it might be, for example, with the case when, you know, in the normal levels, you know, where the enemies are starting flying in, you can actually start shooting already before they actually arrived and you kill half of them before they actually did anything and that's not fun so um so yeah even though it kind of like punishes uh, or kind of like it, it takes away this idea that you know if you know the levels by heart and you can position yourself in the right position and you maybe start shooting and shoot them down before they can do anything and that kind of takes away from that kind of uh, skill um but also i think the game is richer if they if there's more interactions with the enemy so i want to do that um, right, so let's um, see if we can shoot down the boss now. See, so now the boss is taking damage, so we're communicating that this is good. This is the correct way of playing the game, so there's no confusion. Um, but um, for the boss to actually uh, to actually take actual real damage, uh, we, he has to transition to something else and fly in. Right, so that was the boss fight. Let's... Um, oh, no, that was not the boss fight. We, all has to, we still have to do something. Um, we have to figure out the life of the enemy. We have to figure out how much life the boss has. Uh, so let's do that real quick. Mm, so first we're gonna go to the spawn function. Uh, so right now he has five health. We're gonna give it hundred health, and we're gonna see how long that lasts. And also I'm gonna use the debug function to actually print the health to the screen. So let's do something like in the in the behavior function when we do do enemies. Uh, do enemy. Uh, we're gonna do something like uh, we're just gonna debug. We still have the debug variable that's printed to the screen and we're gonna say like we're gonna print it to the screen there's just one enemy so we're just gonna see his health there's 100 health and we can shoot at him so uh, actually i want to like if i just normally shoot at him i want to be able to um to uh, go through all four phases at least once. Oh, Jesus. I didn't pay attention. It's like in school. I'm back at school, not paying attention. Oh, dear. Yeah, this, this, is, this, is, this is a good pattern. All right. Um, so we went through all four phases, but I felt we can give him a little bit of a boost. 120, I think, might be good. Let's try that. Yeah, this is this is a good this is a good phase. I like this phase a lot. Just eleven health points. Ah, oh, man, that's also a good phase. Maybe twenty-five. Maybe twenty-five. Let's let's try the. 
30. Let's go 30. I want there to be a real danger of him having to actually go through all of the of, of the second second phase again. I want there to be like, oh no, this thing again. Because if if he does the second phase, you can you cannot actually do a lot of damage. So you have to wait until he goes all the way up again, and then you have the dangerous this phase, right? So you don't want to go through that again. So um, so yeah, I want if you have enough health, there to be enough health for this to be a real danger and right now it seems like it's not a danger because you can do a lot of damage in this phase if you take the gaps yeah see now you can kill him before or that third phase uh, but it's also there's a real danger that you will actually go around the screen and that will cause a lot of pain that's good that's fun this ladies and gentlemen, was the boss. Now, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, this was a bit of an artificial uh, creation. Generally, this entire tutorial was a bit artificial, um, but in this specific case, this was very artificial because all of these numbers that I derived, you know, I mean, right now, the health is something that we derived uh, experimentally. Uh, but, you know, like all of the, these numbers, um, how fast things are flying, how quickly we are shooting, I kind of cheated here a bit because I did it before, so I kind of knew what I'm looking for. Uh, I kind of went through this process before. I kind of like uh, did a prototype where I implemented all of this stuff, and that was a lot of trial and error. And you didn't see that trial and error because I kind of like knew where I'm going already, kind of more than I would usually do. Um, so don't worry if your approach, if your uh, programming of uh, no bosses in specific, but also like the entire shmup in general looks a lot more haphazard and a lot of more trial and error. It looks more trial and error for me than on these tutorials, uh, but it's just like maybe not really that fun and seeing me, you know, figuring out the number for half an hour, which definitely happens in real life. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep these things to a minimum. Still happens sometimes, that's fine, and it's still just supposed to be a, you know, natural programming uh, thing, not just copying pasting from something I wrote previously. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely more streamlined, the process is more streamlined and more uh, easygoing than it would be when I was doing it from scratch. Uh, another thing is that, we, uh, yeah, this is very inefficient, obviously. Um, there is a lot of um, resources that are very limited in, in Pico8, but uh, I just decided not to worry too much about optimization. Uh, for example, one of the resources that we haven't even talked about, but in the to uh, bottom right corner, there's something called tokens. Uh, this is something that is quite important. Um, this is basically tells you how much code you can write. And right now we are at 4,900 tokens from 8,192. That number is something that you will you will uh, come to uh, hate or em embrace or enjoy. I don't know. This is very. You will have complex feelings with this number once you start developing Pico 8 a lot. Uh, so yeah, you can get mugs and t-shirts down there in the doobly-doo with that number. Uh, we haven't reached that number yet. We are at 4,900, so we have plenty of tokens to work with. So I wasn't really that focused on optimizing this code for tokens. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to optimize this, to this code for tokens, then I would really like question every new function that I create. Um, I would uh, maybe try to do it because two phases are always very similar. So maybe I would m want to maybe reuse phases somehow. Mm, I would definitely try to avoid the dot syntax as much as I can. Uh, because every dot is another token. It's it's a whole topic. We're going to come that maybe at, at some um, a later point. Uh, but also there's other resources. There's sprite space, right? And so this boss is deliberately created in a way that I can just uh, draw half of it. Uh, and if you go if you go to the um, PQO8 wiki, actually, let's do that real quick. Right, so here's the Pico8 wiki about the sprite function, the SPR function, and so you can see there is all of the parameters or all of the um, arguments that the sprite, uh, the function takes. Uh, we haven't actually went through all of them. Uh, we had the number of the sprite x and y, we have the width and height, but we didn't notice that there's also flip x and flip y. These are, at the end, there's two Boolean parameters that you can also add, you don't have to, but you can add, and if one of them is set to true, or both of them, uh, the sprite would get flipped horizontally or vertically, so it will look like the mirror image of the sprite. And something you can do then is uh, you can take advantage of this and just draw, uh, like put half of the sprite in a sprite sheet and then basically draw an enemy twice uh, with the, uh, the other side of this face, basically would being just like a second sprite, um, second copy of the same sprite that just flipped around. And that will basically half 
the amount of sprite space that an enemy is using. So in this case, instead of having like the entire width of this of this um, of this tab, we would actually just use kind of like you know, uh, can I, yeah, like this kind of space. All the four frames would fit into this space, and you, we could probably optimize even further if you wanted to. So yeah, if sprite space is something that you're fighting for, uh, then you can use this trick to uh, to kind of like compress this sprite, this enemy, to make it use up. Uh, less sprite space so we can have more enemies or longer animations or you know sprites about other things not just this enemy but in our case if you look at this you know we don't we have plenty of sprite space left and there's not much else that we want to actually draw to the screen so it's fine and i think that's kind of like maybe even an important lesson there's always like this tendency of uh, especially of programmer types of like computer science types to be like oh this is not efficient you should do it like this you know and that's fine, it's good to learn those techniques, it's not bad to point these things out, but also you have to see things in context. Like, is this, do we have to be efficient here? Like, is, is are there other concerns that have a higher priority? And in this case, it was more important to me to just, you know, to get this simple shmup on the road, right? That's more important to finish the game here and, and start playing rather than trying to optimize something that, that we won't ever run out of anyway, right? Right, so let us just uh, do this, this final cleanup here where we delete the debug stuff. So we want to delete this, um, let me see, where is the debug function here? This is stuff, we're gonna comment this out and we're gonna start the wave at wave number zero. So, um, all right, there's one last thing I wanted to add, but I sadly, I don't have it here. So I have to get it from the future. So we have to rely on a Christian from the future coming in and bringing this thing in. Greetings, humans. I come to you from the distant future of two days later. <laughs> I don't know where the machine ends and the human begins. I'm sorry, it's, I had to do this gag. Uh, anyway, I'm here uh, to fix some little details that I forgot to mention, but also I have a special delivery. Uh, the, detail, de little, the little details that I'm here to, uh, to mention is that you probably should uh, set the debug to nothing. Just, just keep, it, keep it at nothing corner. I think this will come in handy. Uh, just don't leave it at chicken unless you want to maybe confuse people. Also very important, uh, we forgot about that. We should set our lives to four and we should um, set share uh, to zero. So we start with no cherries in our thing. Oh, and also, of course, we should set our wave uh, to zero. It is somehow set to zero here now, but we want to actually set it to eight now because we want to still do little, little tweaks to the boss. So my delivery that I bring you from the far, far future of two days later is I brought you some music and I brought you two additional sound effects that I think will spice things up. All right, so as always on the left side is that um, I have prepared actually a little donor cart that is just the music that we want to paste in. And we're gonna put this on the, on the cart on the right, which is our actual program. Um, so let us just listen to the music first to kind of like, because uh, Sebastian did some, some really good work on this one. And yeah, let's enjoy that one. Yeah, there we go. 12 whole um, tracks, 12 whole, no, actually 13 whole uh, um, patterns that we have to import here. So he went a little bit overboard. This is a long piece of music. If you don't want to import it, that's fine. There is still two sound effects that we probably should forward to, but let's paste in the music first. Um, okay, so I am going to go into the pattern editor and I am going to go to a 10 and I'm just gonna copy these things over. You already seen how this looks. There we go. So there's the, this first pattern uh, that is now pattern number ten. That is kind of like the intro track. Um, this is where the there's, there's one pattern that's kind of like an intro music while the boss is coming in, and this is the real begin of the loop. 
Um, okay, so um, we have to start like going through the sound effects now. For those people who cannot copy and paste, who are maybe working for education version, uh, we're going to start at sound effect 36. I want to go through all of the sound effects pretty quickly. Uh, so if you want to copy them sound effect by sound effect, you know, note by note, uh, then you have to pause the video and, and look at the note sheet, right? Just like some synth tracks for the melody, basically, I guess. Oh, oh yeah, and then there's some arpeggio in the background. And that's it. That's all of the sound effects. You. It will soon take some time copying them note by note, but it's worth it. Now, while we're here, I also wanted to copy over the sound effects. That's kind of like two important sound effects that I... Uh, Created for to to kind of like give more character to our boss. I, I'm I'm not I, I can show you the individual notes, but they don't really matter. I just like do, did a bit of a zigzag line with the orange instrument, and then important is that it's uh, detuned. Um, I think the bass doesn't do anything, and also it's set to dampen on the middle setting, uh, and it sounds like this. This is the death, uh, the death sound of the monster when he dies. He he says this, <laughs> and. He also has a greeting, which is this. This is a big wave going down, up and, and down, and there's some, some sawtooth in, in there to kind of get, add some character. And again, similar ideas, uh, fully detuned, uh, buzzes on and dampeners at the middle setting. That's, that's, a, that's a friendly hi. <laughs> it's not angry at all. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm gonna copy these things over. Uh, one is gonna be 50. Let's do a greeting at 50. There we go, greeting at 50. And then we're gonna copy, this is the death, that's 51, okay? Right, let's start adding these sound effects in. All right, so let us go to first, let's go to um, to the waves, right? This is the fly-in sound. So we are going to say if a wave is um, smaller than last wave, then, uh, we're going to do a sound effect else. We're going to start the music. Uh, music, and I think it was pattern number 10. We're going to see if this works. Uh, and also I want to do the sounds of the monster. So first sound is when the monster flies in. So that's when, you know, uh, I'm, I'm assuming when he changes his, uh, his pattern to boss. Um, I'm, I'm going to give him the SFX. Um, that was 50 for the hello. And then when he dies, that's going to be in the kill uh, function. That's going to be here in the behavior, uh, the kill enemy, uh, kill, en kill end. There we go. Um, here we're going to do a uh, sound effect 51. Let's see how that works. I'm going to save, run. Nice! There is a bit of a stylistic uh, jump between the final boss music and the wind music now because the wind music is still this kind of like Galaga sound effect, but that's fine. We're not gonna, uh, you know, meddle around with the music too much more. Something I would suggest adding here when the monster flies in. Oh, in the do enemy function, there we go. Uh, here where the monster actually does the sound effect, I think it's good to set the monster to await 30. Um, so, um, you know, he makes the sound effect uh, and I'm gonna also shake him. So my n dot shake. Uh, equals 30, also 30, uh, for 30 frames. And the idea is that, you know, when the monster is talking, he, he should be attacking and shooting at you. I think it, it, it creates a bit of a like, cutscene effect here. 
Oh, that didn't work. Oh, it was um, not my n. U dot wait. Now it should work. Maybe a bit too long. Let's make it uh, like 28. And a shake maybe for only 20. Let's try that. Yeah, that's, that's, that looks better. Okay, so a very important thing before we uh, move on to the playtesting is to set the wave uh, down to zero. And there's little detail here as well. Uh, I've, if you maybe paid attention. Uh, there we go. Here, uh, there is a little debug uh, text that we forgot to delete. And now we're finished moving back to the past. Okay, okie dokie. So this was the boss. This was the big boss fight. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was, it was, it was, mm, I, I'm, I think the boss fight is a, is a really nice ending to, to, to the series. However, this is not technically the final episode of this, uh, of this tutorial. There's still going to be one more episode. There's still going to be episode 29 coming up where we do some, there is some still one thing that we haven't dealt with, which is the score. That's something I want to fix. Uh, but also I wanted to start playing this game now. And this is going to be the final doggy zone. On the final doggy zone, there is going to be one goal and one goal only. We're going to start playing this game. That's right. So this is a controller that I like to use for playing Spaz, but you don't need a controller like this. You can play it on a keyboard. I just want to point out that you can attach controllers to your PC and uh, Pico 8 will recognize them, even if you play them in the, in the browser version. Even that should recognize game controllers. So you can start playing this game now and, and play testing. And I think this is a very important thing to do. So the doggy zone for this episode is going to be just playing the game and then seeing what's wrong. I want you to actually take, you know, some notepad or at least your cell phone, uh, have it there so you can write down things that you uh, that you observed, that you didn't like, that um, need fixing. And I want you to compile a list of things that you want, still want to fix about this game. And then on the next episode, we are going to be also addressing those things. And I'm going to play this version of the game myself. I'm going to see if there's any bugs. And so we're going to return on the next episode, on the final, final episode, the true last boss. Uh, episode where we're going to deal with these things. For now, I will say the things that I say at the end of every episode. I will say a big shout out and a big thank you to all of the people, the wonderful people at Coffee who support this show. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs. Right, right, right. So this is the time where we're going to have some fun with our game. We're going to play the game. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to see what uh, we're going to enjoy the fruits of our labor. And um, then we're going to return on next episode where we're going to fix all those problems. We're going to take care about the scoring. And then we're going to think about there's going to be one last surprise. One little, little cool thing that I have prepared for you guys. But you're going to have to check this out on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.